uh, very good morning to everyone. Morning, uh, to meet everyone here, yeah, especially on Saturday morning. So today we are come here in this building to share our experience. Uh, you might learn from this that to be boring. Business. As you know, uh, we have a uh, president in Malaysia for the last uh, 25 to 30 years. So we are actually a uh, construction chemicals company, right? So in a short while, we'll play a video just regarding our company, group of company. Uh, you can see here what actually market uh, is involving that way to the construction markets. Okay. Switch on the yeah. That's it. <laughs> A group of men marked out a path, which today is the path to success. These men are still revolutionizing the building world. Playing their part in the construction of small and large-scale works, from private homes to the conservation of our historical and artistic heritage. In MAPE, research is a fundamental cornerstone in order to support this progress, adapting to suit increasingly ambitious and complex projects, helping to make the thoughts behind evolution a reality, because without research, there cannot be quality Quality, which is a living part of each and every one of our products and which has enabled us to become a reference point and a constant guarantee of success for all our clients and partners. Because only with quality is it possible to guarantee solutions with the capacity to actually change the way we construct and think. Organizing seminars and training courses, workshops and conventions every year for all our professionals from the sector. With a more eco-sustainable outlook to help safeguard the environment. Because quality can never disregard ethics. Ours is a code of ethics which openly declares who we are and what we believe in. Our love for sport, an aggregator of culture based on values and commitment. Our love for art ensures we are attuned to global communications. We are proud to be at the forefront where our own history is the future. A future that we can already reach out to and touch. This is us. We are MAPE. Okay, so please turn, turn on back the light. See, I think that's a bit. Okay, so um, that's how you came in. Also, uh, I have a colleague, uh, I've got the issues that basically they are on our sales and marketing teams. Uh, I believe that you you get some hands out and also some from the start. So, 
uh, please continue to like the, our Facebook or YouTube. And, and actually, in there, you can actually get a lot of information. Uh, such as now, uh, they converted a lot of applications and also information with the uh, learning by YouTube channels. Okay, so uh, as from the video itself, you can see market actually we are not only um, support or creative in you know, all these building life materials, but also we conduct a lot of trainings. Trainings like today's is a direct sharing session that we believe that through the education to the knowledge, and we can actually make the environmental better. Or you know, today we also talking about the sustainability. All right, so market products is not only helping the industry to grow to make it better. That is why uh, today's speaker, Marcus, my colleagues from uh, Asia Pacific, he will be talking about how is the selection and why the order is the uh, all the key elements to successful industry growing. Because people spend money, your clients spend money already, you know, we have budgets, we have the requirement, but how to do things correctly, how to select it correctly, right? So I hope today after this session, uh, at least people in this room and all the people that are in the online, they can have a better idea about this uh, section of the foreign, very important industry. Uh, so, uh, Mape is a worldwide company, as you can see, we origin from Milan. And this is 2021 figures, 3.3 billion euros uh, turnover. And uh, there's some interesting figure here. It is spread in five continents over 35 different countries. And also, we have 100 subsidiaries in 57 different countries. So it's a huge group. And talking about the products, we have more than 6,000 products in the building line. So like I say, uh, it may not be, even for myself, uh, I do not know all the products for the 6,000 product range. But what interesting here is, basically, we have a specific product to solve your problems. All right? If you feel anything, you can uh, any, uh, uh, you know, uh, specific question later, you can always ask. So we definitely have a solution for, for everybody here. Then we do research center, R&D center, and we have uh, 11,000 employees all over the world, okay? Uh, this will take you better how much they present in the worldwide. And we started from Italy, of course, you can see a lot of talks here. Basically, it's very active for European countries. But nevertheless, Asia is start growing very, very strongly as Malaysia. Of course, we have a attack uh, regional office uh, because such as my colleague Marcus is stated in Singapore. And today is our you know pleasure to invite him to come here and talk about these uh, topics. And this is the, our factory in Milan about Malaysia. So we do production in 2015. And this year is uh, basically you come to the eight, eight years. Huh? So far, so so good. And this this uh, plant basically produce a lot of product, not only used in Malaysia, but in all those support in the other regional office, such as Hong Kong, Indonesia, Singapore, Vietnam, all these countries. Right? Because we are actually a uh, type of big producer in the Southeast Asia. Okay. So if here maybe we produce cementation and also liquid products. But as you know, that chemicals are what we are is chemicals. So when we talk about chemicals, but it's a lot of different different components, right? Be active. You need to mix A and B, for example. So some of the product A may be spent, B may be liquid. So that is why we have cement plant, liquid plant, as you can see here. And we have all the production warehouses, product development. QC technical service training. We conduct a lot of training here as well. Hands-on trainings to our applicator, to our contractors, and as well as certified by your guys. Oh, so um, in fact, I would like to invite if you know Pan Modern, you have a uh, programs that you wanted to visit our plant and together with the you know what we call it um Lawana, some people like that. So I always say this huh? So do let our um uh, uh, people know so that we can do something maybe next year or this year. Right? This is going to end, all right? Okay, uh, in general, we have 24 product lines in our corporate levels, but like I say, 6,000 product not easy to digest, not every product that we are going to use. So, Malaysia, we actually categorize 15 product lines, these are the 15 product lines, and honestly speaking, we cannot talk all in these two hour sessions, right? So today, what we are focusing is product of cementation and raising for it only. 
All right, like I say, if next chapter, maybe you are, you, you think a uh, waterproofing subject is interested, then we can conduct another one. So there will be different product manager in charge to come here to explain to you. Okay, so uh, I hope I can give you a brief introduction of Mape. Uh, without giving the time, I will pass it to my colleagues. Uh, today, the key speaker, Smarkers, he will start the presentation today. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. And uh, thank you for coming. So it's quite exciting for me as well. So my name is Michael Sergeant. I'm the regional manager and for industrial floor and taking care about the sales, the floor and the egg region. So we're talking about New Zealand, Australia, down to Malaysia, India, uh, Korea, Cambodia, Thailand, and so on. So in my last 23, 25 years were so mainly in, in the industrial floor. So when I spent some time in the regional class, you see different applicators, different architects, different consultants, different circumstances. Um, so you can imagine that it's quite a diverse diversity in terms of how you how you treat it and what kind of conditions you have back on site. That that is it today all about. If I give a little bit of a rundown of the different experiences I see and where we are coming from. Because, in my opinion, the material is not the most important in this whole uh, endeavor. You have a project and you need to look much deeper into that only the material. The material has certain properties. And we have excellent, also excellent um, competitors in the market. And when you take some of these competitors and you compare them a little bit, you compare this chart, right? So then the properties are quite similar. So but where's the key? Where's the key of doing a really good flooring? Where's the key of identifying what kind of material we're using? So in combination with standards, of course, there are elements is a lot of standards. We have there, uh, of course, zinc works. <laughs> <laughs> and excuse me, my voice is a little bit rough today, so I was the last several uh, days, so I was really bad. I had normal oil and every flu, but it catch me a little bit still and a little bit under medication. The voice is a bit rough. So, most likely, after the one of our talk, I'm ready for a day to talk to someone. Chinese. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So the, the first one is getting preparation and, and, and the idea of yeah, incorporating standards, but it's a big thing. Uh, as the professor always said, uh, this one said, you can't have everything in mind, you don't even know where you find it. So that, that, that is one of the key which I'm really taught sometimes in universities. And the second part is then the selection of the material, which is also quite exciting. It's a lot of projects and pictures. So where I am coming from is quite diverse, and you will see this. But first, some some ordinary ordinary impressions of the site circumstances. So what we have material availability it means this material while we're available is also interesting for you. Logistics, storage, shipping, the handling, and material calculation. Material calculation is also a very interesting part because the applicator needs to follow a certain calculation that is taken as in the specification outline. That we provide a certain quality. Yeah. <clears throat> so then comes the building location, the substrate conditions, tools and equipment, project management, manpower skills, material performance, technical support. I underlined in red the support, but that is the key. There is one key issue people have material that you can put on the floor. And then, of course, something is the direction of the applicator, which is extremely important that you're providing the applicants. So, then technical support after the certain technical support on site. How, how is the testing on site? These kind of things. Following up the right mixing procedure. So, in general, standards, of course, when we have the 13813 flooring standards, we're talking about the cementitious screen testing, calcium, uh, as well as paint screen, magnesium. Uh, and down to as RZMPD resin flooring streets that covers by the by the standards. So at first of all, the 50.4 and the uh, 31A's, which street materials, product of systems protection and material conditions properties. So that is roughly covered. 
Sure, we have data questions and we can look into the other details a little bit, what, what it tell us, but that is quite comprehensive. So, but when I mean circumstances, I mean what do we face? We have circumstances like a drainage system, you join this um, epoxy resin, fuel resin. We have coding upturns in the food industry. Uh, we have these mini uh, conductors in wafer tech production areas. We had so a bit of a silence. We had so chemical resistance, we had storage, we had the residential building, we had the residential building, we would see it on the So here again. We didn't understand the so you can just copy the link. So the circumstances of the site. It is how do I charge to the side? I can write a specification, but we need to write a section. The specification also needs to be done. You find all this type of grease, disdain, dirt, contaminations, all kinds of different kind of cracks, and some is polished, some is rough, some have depression, some have high points. All these kind of things we have seen on site. So the question is, what do we come and what kind of flatness or roughness do we want at the end of the day? That comes from the only specifications we can write. But so we have this condition that is what we have on the side. side. And the executor said, our contractor said, no, no, I need to go tomorrow. We need to brush it out, right? Sure, you can remove the water, you can sweep it out. Maybe a little bit of deep up away, but there is still water inside the concrete. Yeah. So we have the closed cells and we have the free cells. Free cells the water that we've already in is a closed cell. We have instilled water inside, especially when the concrete is new. We have usually a, a, a grading from seven days, 14 days, 28 days, for the concrete is completely cured, right? And then we can be say, and then we decide how much water is still in the concrete available. This depends on the drainage system, the PVC shapes below, what kind of land mixture they are using in the concrete, and so on. It is quite diverse. We have seen this kind of cracks always on site. The repair, bad workmanship, bad concrete, concrete mixture, water cement radio was screwed up. All kinds of these things. We find this kind of scenarios. They are breaking off. So they're using the wrong material for patching. Sure, some of the sheep are you use something in the back for $5.50. And patch around, but if the time will call you again in three months, it's breaking out again. So we talk about quality. One is preparation of facilities, one is the quality of the material. It means companies like Marcus to research facilities, more than 1,000 chemical engineers, doctors, professors, which are figuring out which material is best to solve these kind of problems, depends on the traffic. And then somebody comes and puts a Cement street there on it, so it doesn't work. The relation is out of, out of sync, right? So we have sometimes contamination, oil, and so on, like you see here. And even though Mark has special materials which can help you to solve the problem when it comes to oil and contaminated surfaces, uh, we have to take care of driving procedures in larger areas. They are flat requirements. High points, low points, we need to fix it, right? And we make sure that maybe it's a big factory with a lot of conveyor belts. It means they request a certain three meters, three millimeter tolerance, um, which falls under 182002. So, but it needs to be measured. So, uh, here's the oil one again. So, we have the pull off test, uh, which is quite high for our uh, oil contaminated surfaces. If you have questions, we can talk later about it. Got to go more in detail, right? And I came to the they need to support again because we need to know that these guys here in the Atlantic they are supporting the whole region. These are the guys which are in charge of showing the applicator on site what to do. They're helping to execute certain projects, they're helping for the after sale, and they're helping also if there's some problems. Problems are there to solve. Every construction has problems. The question is how do we respond to it? Do you send faxes and emails to each other blaming, or do you go ahead and take the lead and say, okay, fine, let's, let's look into this one and then we go ahead? 
So these guys are the first problem in order to identify issues and avoid any issues. So these are the boys in Singapore, which I have with me. They're doing also this nice, beautiful sound in chat here, or which we have outside. They do also the reports on site, so technical support, technical documentation, and a certification. You want to know uh, what are the readings, for example, in the conductive law. You specify that you need readings, you specify as well how many readings you want. There are certain circumstances, how many readings you do per square meter, 50 square meter, 100 square meter. When do you do it? So they can be outlined in these specifications. So our boys doing this kind of comprehensive work and producing then the, the reports for it. You will get from us, of course, the applicator method statements following the specification. That means we do for you the specification, which is the case. Specifications are personalized always that you work in close with the architect, figuring out what is the issue and problem. And the applicator like get a method statement. In addition, we have, of course, these kind of booklets because architects are supposed to have it. These are an overview about the industrial flooring products being offered with 3D models. You can easily identify, ah, this is okay, it's categorized by industry. Let's say we have a pharmaceutical industry. Then we have a category with pharmaceutical offering and products. Which you can say, ah, this is what I call now. One of the guys from Mafia, can you help me? I, I'm interested in this. So you get all these three D models, uh, so for better identification. So we have the samples, you can customize them uh, for the architects. We have the larger ones, the smaller ones. I still believe in that we need large uh, samples in order to present ourselves properly and then give it around. It's a matter of impression. You say to somebody, hey, I look at you. Here's my first impression. How do you look like this? First impression. Then you talk, and it's a second impression. You present yourself with some proper um, uh, samples, and you list them nicely in the build-up system, and you can have a better talk. You have a better relationship to, to uh, uh, this kind of uh, scenarios. We have all the large customers and clients, um, Nestle, Coca Cola. We have all the different samples when it comes to the color sequence, and we need to follow a certain build up for another factory, let's say in Thailand, like Cambodia, or in Coca Cola, New Zealand. So the, the factories are quite similar in the structure, so we can offer you the same material, and we, we store this. So this kind of samples is going just now around, they will be professional and clear. And now comes the key element of everything. That is simply what you get from us. But here is where we start. We start with the concrete. Excuse me for a second. Thank you. You're vibrating the concrete, depends on the water cement ratio and factor. You're vibrating the concrete, the heavy is going down, the liquid is coming up. It means you have top on top loose latents, no compressive strain. That is the first thing we need to identify. Whatever we do, the concrete is done. How the concrete is done, we need to check what is the top layer of the concrete. Once they're vibrating smoothly, whatever. It's loose, latent, and no compressive strain, very bad stuff. So the tests, of course, are according to all the standards, it depends on the standards. We have the slum flow, aggregate size, we need to look, mixing water uh, ratio, concrete strength. These kinds of things can all be tested, of course. We have the fine aggregates, adjustment of moisture in the aggregates. So it needs all to be considered. These are by the special department. Also in Mark, we have the construction lines with dealing with the concrete materials. So they're taking care of this one. So it means surface preparation. So usually the testing of the surface preparation uh, materials, compressive strain, flexible strain, wear resistance, uh, setting time, shrinkage, or swelling, consistency, modulo of elasticity, impact resistance, and bond strength, which are the usual practice uh, tests we, we have in either from an independent source, independent testing institute, or on site as well. So when it comes to do some of the impregnations, it depends on what is the concrete conditions. We have in them in general, when it comes to coating and flooring, the hydrofluoric, uh, hydrophobic impregnation, impregnations, and film forming. 
So film forming is clear, nothing penetrates so watertight. Uh, hydrophobic is this covering is slightly, but it's still breathe. And impregnation is that means the finance is there, but there's no breathing. Before testing, we have been also these kind of testing instrument on site that I mentioned earlier. For example, a pull-off test, very simple one to identify how is the concrete condition after 28 days or what to buy, something like that. Often with two months, of course, nothing happened. So we need a quick test. We need to know how many Newton per square millimeter of FBA I have. So this is a little saying that we say roughly, if I have foot traffic, one Newton minimum square meter per millimeter. If I have a traffic, one Newton five Newton per square meter per millimeter, I pull off strings, right? So if I achieve that, it's fine. I can test it. I see it already with my eyes. I see why something's wrong. I hack a little bit. I stretch a little bit. I see if the concrete is powdery, porous, dense, and so on. I say, oh, it's too big. Let's make a pull off test. So if the pull off test is weak, I can advise the client that I say, hey, we need to do something. We need to consolidate it. We need to strengthen this. And then just ask in the game what kind of material we can offer to improve the property, to consolidate, and make sure that we get a good solid condition before we do any photo. Moisture is a big thing, big, big, big thing. So the moisture condition is extremely important before we apply. We have the lots of regulations that we under university regulations 3.5% uh, in the concrete. Usually around four, four and a half, we are still good because of the material selection, right? So this, this kind of instrument, our voice on site can identify together with the activity that was going on. Moisture, I mentioned, big thing. If you do, if the moisture concentration is so high, you will get bubbles. It needs to be tested. The moisture, as mentioned just before, it needs to be tested. There are different test methods. One is normal test method. It means you use a, a normal electronic reading on top of the surface. That gives you an indication. The right thing is, what well, you go deeper down, hacking up 20 grams, put it in a coffin, and measure the difference of weight. So that would be the common da own taking. So it means you have there the possibility to test this if you really want. The other, the other technique is the calcium carbonate technique. So uh, it's also a chemical reaction. You take something out into the bottle uh, together with the calcium carbonate, you shake it, you have a reaction, you have a pressure, and then you see. How much uh has in the It will be the right one. But if not, you see, it depends on. I lived two years in Bangkok, so I know because they, they're living on the sun. It means if the, the concrete is not properly prepared for the mixture, for the drainage system phase, or no PVC, what happens through the rising dentist, capillar pressure, and so on, we have problems. So how do we overcome this? I cannot simply go on. You look at balance, thousand percent. So we need to come up with solutions. Sure, we have these solutions that can make a cementitious moisture barrier, for example, in the three millimeter. We can talk about a special primer. We can talk about also heavy duty epoxy mortar spray wet in wet application. So this is quite heavy and strong. It's minimum five to eight millimeters safe. So we have to work against the moisture. It depends on what condition we are finding, how rough the concrete needs to be in order before we apply this kind of thing. So then we have, of course, a of strengths in different devices. This is something where I have our guys going around and using this kind of, of instrument. Even here, this, this box, what you see there, there's my samples. Every time when I travel around, I do that because you can see nicely the kind of different samples. It gives you a better impression. Roughness is another thing where all people ask me roughness, safety, testing, right? It means different roughnesses. Car, for example, you have a driveway, sure, a certain roughness. You have a ramp, you need a higher roughness. You have a parking area, you need more smooth. It depends on cleaning and contamination, but also how you test slip resistance. So there are other uh, standards as well. I mean, the British standard for the BS7976 often, we use a pendulum, pendulum test, right? So there are also the American standard, the German one, where we're talking about the R value, R8 to R13. Which is test on the ramp, it's a different standard. They're using a weight which is at a certain point starts to move. So, this is the R resistant value from 8 to 13. But we're usually testing it here. Or we have abrasion resistance, it means our good material that comes out the abrasion. If I have a sanitation product or I have a quad sand and you, you, you send me over and you use, for example, the burn the testing uh, instruments. 
Um, and the different standards means maybe different ways they use it, uh, and different cycles of, of movement and measure then the milligram I have left in order to determine what it is. So then you have the right one machines on the concrete, once you identify it and the concrete is on, you can do it by hand. There's a right one machine, there's an electronic a gasoline machine. Concrete, gasoline, no problem. Comes to epoxy, mortar, or straight use electric. That is the that is the recommendation on my side. Because an electrical machine doesn't contaminate. If you have fuel in an old machine, it drips on a on an epoxy drawing, not nice. It's contamination again. So electric would be uh, an advice to do. There are different methods of, of doing concrete screening of cars and, and, and laser screening. Uh, that gives a different effect in flatness number number uh, A. Number B is much better and faster technique. And uh, depends on the water of cement radio factor, you get in a very smooth uh, surface. Then, of course, you can have a floor harder. That means you have a dissipate, you densify it. So when you have a floor hardener, very important for you to realize, floor hardener means density. If then somebody says, can you coat it onto the floor hardener? It's completely different in terms of the penetration into the concrete. It's very dense. It means better is to have no floor hardener and then build up a nice system instead of having a floor hardener and then putting a coating on top of it. So a different solution, very important when it comes to this kind of thing. We spoke shortly this morning about it could also be liquid hardener. Maybe the architect says, oh, I put a liquid hardener first, yeah, then it also a bit better. But if I put a coating on top of it, it's a different penetration, it's a different bonding, compatibility, chemical compatibility between the product. It's a lithium hardener or is it a sodium silicate hardener? What is the next one? Most likely, often, in many cases, is an epoxy primer. But it's then not much penetration. So often we have to create a profile to get a good point, right? <coughs> so then we have the different kind of scenarios where we have kind of cross the uh, a very dense surface with a different kind of surface that we all have seen. We get in the very porous uh, surfaces, and then we know what, what we need to do with it. How do we need to consolidate it? Do we need to level it? Uh, um, do we need to keep penetration prime uh, something like that? So, and as mentioned earlier, here we have it again, the hydrophobic impregnation of hope. So what needs to be done for these kind of bad, rough surfaces and treatments, right? So in general, we have then the 15 or uh, 4, 2, impressed protection, moisture control, physical resistance, chemical resistance, and increasing resistivity, which is really the testing uh, procedure for this. We have then also the RCI or the RCIA. Sure, we cannot go into all these details, but of course, we are giving you the selection of who is more important where, especially 710, the syndicate for design, installation, maintenance, protective, law, volume of law systems. But it is the key element. What touches the prepared surface first? That is to 95% of the primer, in our case, it is epoxy uh, primer, which needs to penetrate into the concrete. Depends on the technology. We have in low viscose, medium viscose, high viscose primer, filled or non filled. It all depends on the porosity of the concrete. Once we see this, we can advise. So, but the key in general is the penetrates. In certain materials, have blue addition in, 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 in uh, when we put it on tires because tires cannot penetrate, right? There's nothing to penetrate. So, we need to put primer with blue addition. So, we need to clean structure. The primer is always a two component uh, oxy uh, 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 free primer, solid free primer. It, has to cover a certain a level. It means you're talking about the roughness or the level. It depends on how sick the uh, material is, uh, is applied. You need to follow and force a certain rule. Otherwise, you have to cover the unevenness 
And you can see that the unevenness of part one third of it is higher to cover the underlayment as well. And I'm losing a lot of material there, of course, in the red section before I do the coating on the blue section. So I go a little bit back again. You see, that is the uh, condition. And this is what I have to achieve. Not that I have an optical appearance of seeing the structure below, right? So here we follow the CSP 1 to 10. And if you say I have a coating of one millimeter, but uh, my surface looks like seven, I have a problem, right? So coming back to my other slides again, if I have a one millimeter, we use usually two or three or four points already on the edge. So, but if I have a roller coat, which we're talking about a mind drawn, so I can use CSP1, CSP2. Sometimes the client don't mind and say, I uh, see a little bit the the uh, ground and the, the low file, but it's okay. So here are different samples, which you can have a look at it, uh, which shows the different CSP values. And uh, so that you on site say, oh, we made an optical inspection. There could be a specification optical inspection of the surface before application of the primary. There could be one condition yeah, in the specification. Because this is important. If you don't have the roughness, you do the interlocking. Penetration is one thing, but we need the interlocking. Yeah. So then we're using often shop glass machine or grinding machines. With shop glass machine, you remember I said latency. The aggregates going down, the water is coming up during the vibration of the concrete. This machine will remove all this latency. It's very effective. It can make depends on the size of the machine. Mm -hmm. 600, 800 to 1,000 square meter per day. It will remove this data. It has a huge vacuum cleaner unit behind it, and it will suck out all the debris as well as the steel bullets shooting on the floor. They get separated once they go into the machine. It's a separation procedure. So this machine can do this. So you can see the machine can also remove all contaminated surface or all coatings. Um, we can use grinding machine, but if you use grinding machine, be careful. It means if somebody specified use a grinding machine, so use a top of machine or grinding machine. The grinding machine is one thing. If you're grinding a concrete surface, the pores are closed. If you have a very, very good vacuum cleaner, you need to suck these pores open. If these pores are not open, you're grinding and you're sweeping with this broom a little bit. No, that doesn't work. It means the primer needs to penetrate. You need open pores. If you specify grinding, specify vacuum cleaning, better than two times. Means they need industrial vacuum cleaners in order to open the spot. Otherwise, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, so we have scarifying machines for certain circumstances. Here again, these are big vacuum cleaner units we need. This is important. Um, I don't know, I cannot emphasize this enough. The other part is, of course, when the concrete is set, cracks. So usually we have the uh, hydrated cement, and we have a certain heat going on during the hydrolization, and it takes up to 40 days. However, there is some movement, there is some shrinkage. We're doing, of course, day joints. Yes, we're cutting day joints, but there will be cracks. And the key is that the shot glass machine removes the first part of this layer. You see the cracks coming out slowly. Some are 0.3, there is some layer cracks or larger cracks. We're having this kind of movement cracks. They need to be prepared. This is very important. We need to knock around this solid. Is it sound? Can I close this track or do I need to remove everything? So cracks need to be stitched. It's like I have an accident in hospital. We need to get stitched. So this is the way you do it. You're cutting into the cracks. You remove the pores. You're doing cross cut. In this cross cut, you're putting even some angle or steel bars. And then you fill it up with a suitable low viscose material which penetrates into these crack lines and reinforces it. So that is how it looks like. Looks like in a hospital, right? <laughs> so you can also do it. Um, a glass fiber over it. Here we have might be one of my five zero glass fiber mesh. So then we can put over it. Have a look at it. And it's uh, highly reinforced. You can do it over a crack, you can do it over the entire area. This depends on how sophisticated you climb this and what is above or below. So this is a crack, bridging, crack, avoiding uh, fiberglass. Very, very important stuff. 
So you can see what we have done here. You can see that we have done a complete loop. We do it over tiles. That means we identify the tiles are okay, solid and sound, we don't need to replace. If it's something, we replace them. So right here, we can broadcasting uh, send over it to level it. We're using send to broadcast to level it and to reinforce. So this kind of things we have, we're using sand and mortar for patching, we're using epoxy mortar for uh, epoxy mortar streets, five to eight millimeter when it comes to the level of the concrete. Yeah, it means we have unevenness in the concrete. So then we power float it and we come back to uh, use an electric power floater that would be advisable to sand. Sand is something we have to pass it, we have all say, we have all kind of different aggregates we use them in general we use quartz sand so now it comes here is one thing i want to make you understand here is a sample one looks very dense one looks very rough so if an applicator here doesn't matter use two different sand sizes say oh i mix a little bit 10 kilo resin with one kilo uh, 10 kilo sand with one kilo resin so then you mix it put it on the floor the question is the size of the, of the aggregates. If he does that, he get maybe 25 newton per square millimeter, maybe more or less. So we sell in our own cell where we have a combination. The combination is the combination of size and shape. You need the seed line, you need the shape around shape in order to get an interlocking. Once you give weight on it, there's a power floating machine. You get this density. So, and this usually is done by four, selecting four to five different sand sizes. You see on the sample, which going around the very dark one, which is the sand selected by the applicator, and you see the very dense one is market product. You see how much material we need to put on top of it. The closing was the filling of the walls, the grouting. It takes more, more material, it needs more money. So it means also the quality store, ours, make 50 newton per square millimeter compressive strength. Total difference compared to the side mix need to be specified. Not that we say make a side mix of 5 millimeter, five millimeter epoxy model, no, specify really. So uh, we're doing set and quad set application sometimes to lift it up. It means it has a broadcasting set and I have some low points. I used a little bit more primer material, like in lifting up a little bit the condition. High points, okay, they stay where they are, but the low points, we can slowly fill up. Then I use the sanding machine, go over it the next day, and I have a much better surface. It's one technique many people have to have realized the technique of a small build up. I can do the procedure again, this is why I'm having quartz and which is quite good, good compressive strain. I do the whole procedure again. So I'm building up a sickness and I'm building up flatness. Then you can do this quartz and in combination with epoxy. Very important. And if they can have really overlooking this fact. So yeah, this is the recovery of the quartz and so we have this kind of scenario where you need minimum one millimeter far away from uh, the edges of any loading bay area. Otherwise, the joint position is too shallow. It's not much shallow enough. So we have injection materials, of course, where we have the different products. We can use cementitious pumping. We have the pumping uh, for the application by end. We have to take care of all the sock hiding around the parameters. It means walls. Everything is moving in a certain in a certain way. Car parks, for example, as well. You can see the cars coming in the morning, the evening. We have a building structure is moving, so we have to isolate. If you have a very strong material that goes around the wall, and then you have movement in the wall, you need to isolate. So it needs to be specified to isolate certain areas, certain materials, and then fill it with some, with some uh, sealant. Most of the time it's a few sealant. <laughs> so we use sealant or joints. It means we have a different kind of techniques where we're using, for example, here in the waterproofing as well as the car park, the top uh, layer, waterproofing, uh, market band joint pillars. Or we're using cement additional material for the complete leveling of bed, completion within the concrete. So here you can see that it was quite, quite bad. 
It depends on we have the, an endless amount of thermoefficient material which can cover uh, certain thicknesses and levels, or we do spread code application with thermoefficient material or with epoxy material or do stretch code or self leveling. This is a point of how bad is your concrete? What is your budget? What is the compressive strength you need in order when I mean a 10 million meter? What is the compressive strength you need, right? We have that from 20 newton up to 15 newton. So it means that it's depends on the thickness as well. So then grinding on tiles means how many be done. And the application of tiles. And here I come back again, what kind of time I'm using on the same on a, on a ceramic tile. So grinding and polishing, we're using for the same machine we have here, our epoxy terrazzo, where we have for the retail uh, application and the sequence of knowing what to do, when to do it. Many applicators do not know the sequence of using the steel and the, the different pads under the machine, grinding it to a certain extent and speed in order to achieve a certain glossness and effectiveness when it comes to terrazzo flooring. Yeah, either you use it for concrete polishing or you use it for terrazzo flooring. Yeah, this is important that you follow a certain sequence with a certain speed with the right machine, otherwise it will not work. Yeah, cleaning, cleaning and polishing, flip floor requirements. We're having a lot of warehouses, so we have the free movement areas. We have the very narrow aisles. So when it comes to flat drawing, we have the EM 15620 or TR34. So and often we're talking about the um, free movement area, FM1 to FM4, or we have the very narrow aisles, the categories up to super flat. And you have to understand super flat. It means we have in the triverse, I think it's around 1.6 meter. 0 0.85 millimeter tolerance. Imagine this one. So how do you do it? With the level material? No, we need definitely some bright or to laser. So however, you can see each higher it goes, each more risk hit of part of the pendulum, you need the specification correctly, knowing which is the height of the racks, then specifying under the free movement area of category one to category three super pack. Knowing what to specify and according to the height, and then you need the right applicator. A little bit like this will not work with super flat. It works with maybe category three and FM, FM, FM2, FM3. But you need a laser guided machine which identifies exactly the high points when it comes to high ratings. So, and then there needs to be done with high certificated machines. So, phase plan is measurement. Um, this is a little bit you saw it before. A couple of questions about joints. Sometimes we have in warehouses joints. It means you coming to the point where the projects are driving, destroying joints. We can, of course, reinforce them at the edges uh, with the epoxy spray or other suitable strong materials, but um, or are using, uh, using an aluminum profile. Yeah, there are the break points actually. But market can offer as well a precast, uh, prefabricated. Joint is around one to one meter fifty long, and we embedded it into and over the expansion joint. So this kind of technique, this kind of technology, is just perfect when it's to customer require a high technology uh, joint solution. I think we can come up with this one together then with the coating, which you can go over and uh, coating over if you want. But this is smooth transition because this is grinded and smoothing. And then it's just perfect for this kind of high state of product. And the coating might become on top of it because in the pharmaceutical company, very sensitive materials, uh, they don't like the concrete dust and so on. So you can coat over the whole entire area, including we have some of the materials which you can coat over the joints as well. Now we have a little break. It was the part. Yeah. Just on the last slide, uh, you have this way to take below. Is below. The whole thing is the construction area is below. Okay, so, no, 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 no. Where, where, where you have this? From the technology and from the point of the wheel moving over it, it's much better uh, waste transfer that was identified instead of having it uh, straight on. So there's much better. 
Okay, let's have a break for a little bit of coffee and some water. I'll talk to you from me. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a matter of the head of the family, so if this will come back to the family. Yeah. Yeah.
No, we can continue. But I think the talk uh, in between when someone went down and uh, somebody said, Oh, it's very, very excellent, and you did it fast. I do it fast because it's quite comprehensive. You can see what I wanted to give to you today is the, the idea of, Oh, ping, I didn't know about that. Ah, this is the niche. I cannot go into all these details. We can talk later about me. You have an idea and say, oh, that was very interesting. You can call one of the, the representatives, market representatives, sales guys, technical guys, whatever it is. You tap into this one and say, hey, I need more information than that. Fair enough. But what I wanted to do with you is here that the I presenting the knowledge we have in combination with all these elections of the materials and uh, getting a little bit of an aha effect, right? So the, sec uh, the second part of it is, of course, the material selection, and here we're working uh, mainly with the FERPA, the uh, FERPA guide, the Resident Flooring Association. So, industrial, commercial, residential part is one of our big areas where we as MAPE have all the uh, materials to cover 98% maybe of all the uh, flooring solutions uh, solar free, epoxy, water based, permeable, moisture barrier system, chemical resistant, UV stable materials, and cementary systems. So I can cover this from the leveling up to the aesthetic, up to the functional uh, ways of providing solutions. Uh, we have a nice packing, of course, I mentioned earlier already the 3D models, which we can provide to you either a, as a physical or as a digital version. So, and the FERFA, the Reservatory Association is a non-profit organization. So they're giving the guidelines actually for what you could use and what kind of material, the signal, and so on. It might be a little tough to see, but anyway, we have these eight categories where we identify what is a law sealer or identify what is a heavy duty, let's see from one to eight, right? And then you can see very simple and clear a floor sealer under 50 microns. So you can say, I don't floor sealer. When it comes to specification, I want to floor sealer. You can point it out in the specs that it should have 100 microns and so on. That means it's very simple coating, um, and there's different techniques in order to achieve 150 microns. But then you know also floor coating, high build, multi layer, floor resin screens, and so on, and the different sequences. Uh, this kind of table will give you an idea to pronounce the right. Uh, the right level, the right material, or specify the right the right product with the idea of the things. Yeah, it's very, very important to look into this one. So the fair has, of course, also has a knowledge for you, has a lot of guidance uh, information and guidance material. We see this, and you go on there on the website, you can download these, uh, even the, uh, the table I had earlier, you can download it from there. And you can see there are different kinds of, from, from cleaning up to uh, car park decking, they're giving out the recommendations and how, where, what, and when, uh, polymer streets, a little bit of explanation about the uh, specification guidelines as well, and uh, documentation, and maybe a little bit also for smoothness, you can see there a little bit on the top right, uh, water, how to use pressure, how to work with it, how to prevent it, and what it is. So that is quite the, an association with works with the educators uh, and the dressing flooring industry. So when we use materials on site, we have to be clear about it that we not identify, hey, this is the material we have selected, but how do we treat it? So now comes the applicator into the game. It doesn't matter if you specify it something to the very best and you have an absolute excellent certification, but the applicator doesn't know really how to use it properly. The tools and equipment, the manpower, the project management, 
the side guy who was running the whole project, knowing and teaching and educating his guys, need to know what kind of tools we need to, 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 to use. If I use a spider, the excitement is in a part, it's part and If I use a pet that makes up, that is more on liquid application. Right? I see people also who do a flat mix up with sand mixing. You, you, you need to properly have the right tools to cover the sand and the mix. Different roller sizes. What kind of rollers I'm using? How many spider I'm using? More interesting for you to notice is it a long hair roller or a short hair roller? Not so much for the specification, only knowledge. If I have a long hair roller, I have more material on the surface. More material on the roller, more material on the surface. Short hair roller, I have less. And they're even shorter birds, probably finishing rollers. So it depends on it. So you play with the consumption. And here, where often shortcuts take in place, you see applicators on site. They play with the applicator consumptions. And our job is from mapping with the technical support, ensure that they can use the right amounts, the right tools, so that he has the right amount of material on the surface. If you need for broadcasting the sand, for example, because the sand needs to stick in the material, not to hang a little bit around. So then uh, it is real money for them. Every hundred gram you miss out of a spare or use more, it's serious money on 100,000 square meter. I know because we do 50,000 square meter, 100,000 square meter project in China. You cannot imagine how much money they're going through. And the precise calculation you need to do with FA data who knows exactly what to do, you know the tools you're using and how much revenue is using for this kind of application. This is the third thing which is far inside the specification, but an important knowledge to know from your side, hey, take care of it. <coughs> Same thing, flat, traveling application, rubber, CG, these kind of things can, um, can identify what needs to be done. The two spatulas, for example, in this case, the low exposed materials, the high exposed materials, how the materials flow through this tool, how is the angle, how the, the applicator is the technique in order to provide an, a 1.2 millimeter, 1.5 millimeter, 2 millimeter. Now you control it. There are some applicators that are using only a flat rubber, traveling over, and it was sitting okay, not too many right? But in the end of the day, you need to select the right tool, and it's a little bit slower the application, and you get a consistent. A consistent application of a certain material. It comes to flatness into the game. How flat, how rough it seems to be. It means how is the how is the application? How flat is the surface when you scratch it over? Are you walking and do an application with a big butter spatula? Or are you on your knees and do a, a soft scraping? These are so um, little things where you see the difference in quality and application. Bobics, one of the things, bobics, start Yeah, so using specific tools, they use even a pipe. So these are the most of the sophisticated tools, right? Expensive? Yeah, you can use more of pipe, it's not possible. Sometimes a little tricky set. So, scale. I don't know how many potato scales I have seen on site. You can only make them, you've seen, you just find out them. I know. That means you see potatoes here, I don't know what I have. We're dealing with chemicals. People have to understand there's an A and B component, sometimes a C component. And then we say you have a certain radio, and you need to follow this radio. If I'm a potato scale, I cannot even see the radio completely if I'm under very much one network. But if I'm mixing chemicals, we want the chemicals to react in the proper condition and harden, then the aggregate I have this kind of stuff on site, right? This is so important, it's completely underestimating these kind of values. And then you wonder, hey, I see, why, why is the short of the hardness so low? Uh, short of the hardness is very soft. I don't know what is going on there. Yeah, could be the result of mixing, yeah. using the wrong mixing ratio, not having the skin on side. Very, very important. So we use using them of carbon epoxy, especially these are our main materials. Um, solvent, free, self leveling, one millimeter. You see how beautiful this is. These kind of areas for laboratory areas, uh, pharmaceutical industry, lab areas, corridor, um, conductive flooring, of course, 
I can use it for the workshop areas, as a rolling board or self leveling. The material we offer in can be A or B. So we have also special roller code materials which give you this glass mirror or finish. But we have one product, you can do a self leveling as a roller code, but this can be a bit of an orange peel. So, but if you make a self leveling, you can see how pretty it is. Epoxy has one negativity, that means it, it's stretch, it gets whitish. That means uh, you need to take care of this one, there's a proper maintenance required. We have also some maintenance wax, which you can uh, use as a maintenance over, over using it once a year, using a wax application on, on top of it, or on top of it. And we have clean room certified products. All our materials are clean room certified, so it means we have the different categories of the body selection of these materials. We're working with all the name for clients. In this case, it's a very old one, so I'm still allowed to use it as Ferrari. So you will use roller coils as well as uh, self leveling. Ferrari mm, has high simplicity in the machines. Shutdown period is very low. They need quality. They need applicators with quality. They need project management with quality. This is what they're getting from us. So. Is the red one your product as well? The red one, uh, the red one yes. It is the, 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 the red one I think is the, uh, it's, it's kind of a rubber metal, but it's, so we have the uh, gray one. So you see the gray application with the uh, marking lines, you know. And then it comes to the warehouse again. Either you have a warehouse only concrete, it means the surface is grinded or applied, or we do uh, an epoxy on top of it, a roller coat of sand line. I would prefer sampling. The reason is because if a roller would application in a warehouse, it's too dangerous because the problem the steel is going down the poly pellets, they're stretching over a roller code with maybe 500 micron, it will stretch, it will peel off, it will be look extremely nasty. If you want an, a high build warehouse, you put a 1.5 million meter on top of it because they're storing sensitive equipment, either computer chips or pharmaceutical materials. Please do it. One and a half million may not specify this one. It is more expensive, yes, but and then it's stretch, it's stretch, it makes it a bit wide. But the flatness is there, the cleanness is there. So um, definitely need to go for that one. No roller code, please. There are some roller codes we have, and we have one which is extremely uh, good. Um, but if the guys driving like Michael Schumacher and banging everything in, forget it. We need, we need to sell that. So a typical normal, normal scenario for these kind of areas where you have the uh, epoxies, roller code application, sometimes it's incorporated sand, less movement and uh, no portrait driving, but we do roller code application, no, no worries about that. Uh, we have also some materials where we can incorporate in our, though we have it incorporated in our epoxy, some do, uh, PVC bits. The surface is completely smooth. Is two millimeters thick and gives a very nice self leveling effect. So we can use it for any kind of laboratory areas. It's non sparking uh, um, residential as well, if you wish to. So it uh, levels extremely well, it looks very pretty. It gives a little bit of quartz effect, right? So even for kitchen areas, but um, for kitchen areas, we have special, special products. Anti sparking. So um, when it comes to the anti starving um, we protecting a human being or we're protecting uh, computer ships. That's a bad way to say. So, and um, when we have the electrostatic discharge from our body, through our body, into the floor, we have to ensure that the charge goes then into the earth point. So, there are different tests, of course, and different resistance levels. A human being in an operation setup has a different resistance uh, uh, requirements than a computer ship. It's very, very sensitive. So we have then the electrical resistance on the EN 10 one the resistance to ground, and the walking tests, which we have done for the different kind of uh, facilities. Electronic industry, hospital, operations theater, production, storage, explosive goods could be available to army, could be any kind of weapon storage facilities, or where there's a lot of dust production. Uh, clean room pharmaceutical industry. So hospital here. Yeah, and the clean room. Why must we do it in that case? I saw sensitive machines which are having uh, EGG and so on. Usually, what is very common for the last 20 years is using a lot of immunium 
uh, and now they're switching uh, to more seamless loading. Um, so we're using the same material, the same pretty load can be achieved by using then a conductive material. Here we work, for example, in uh, Solaris in Singapore, RCP Solar, large companies that use all conductive materials. So we can offer the different solutions, the different resistance levels, as mentioned earlier and uh, before. Uh, the resistance levels for our system are 10 power of 1, 10 power of 6, and 6 to 10, 9. So it means we have a roller coaster version, we have uh, cell leveling versions, so which can cover all kinds of requirements for lower budget or higher budget, depends on what kind of facility you, you have uh, with your clients. And the build-up system is always the same, that we have the concrete, you need a certain flatness here, the flatness and extensification. You need to specify a certain flatness, they need to be flat. The roughness is one thing, but we are showing you already the CS flatness, roughness, but the flatness. It means each flatter is the base is, each flatter are the readings data. If the surface is uneven, your material in between is a certain sickness, nominal sickness, unevenness. Then you have different readings, the readings going off in all kinds of directions. If the surface is really flat and you measure, you, your measurements are much more consistent. So also if you certify, of course, after the concrete, you apply an the run, then we apply the copper tape. After the copper tape comes the black carbon fiber layer, which we're rolling on, has also a certain consistency. Back to the roller, you remember? The thickness of the roller, the roller has how much amount of material I have, because it's also calculated how thick the black layer is, Different companies, manufacturers have different application techniques. That means some using a thinner one, using a thicker one. So when they're different uh, instruments, they're using to achieve that. So then you see the black carbon fiber layer with the tape, and then comes the top hole, which is uh, to 80%, which is a cell leveling product, uh, around one of two millimeter thick. A very beautiful impression there. And uh, then comes to the measurement, which we can uh, use that for the connection to the earth point. Uh, there are also, I can use this along a little bit. We as market providing the kind of earth point uh, tools. Uh, so means there are regulations where you need to have a certain amount of, of points connected in a room. 50 square meter room, for example, one point, but often is it that we have 100 to 200 square meter, could be one point in uh, big areas that can be specified, need to be specified. So then we have these tools where you say we need to specify proper equipment to uh, us the whole uh, area that we see here, the connection points. Yeah, 150 to 200 square meter. That gives you then a certain radius that you overlap. Even if I don't do an earth point, even I only want you have to understand when the electric discharge is going through the body into the ground, it spreads out of course. But as if the copper tape is it's elected, it moves the electrostatic discharge much faster and more consistent into the, into the earth point. So uh, these kind of uh, things when you're at the and at the here you can have this, we provide this, of course. Then our guys taking the service that went earlier that do these beautiful reports on site, which you need. This is need to be specified how many reports you need, how many points. Then you can satisfy your client. You need a certain readings. There are also norms and beams which providing there are sometimes failures, but you have a failure by the page of five to eight percent, uh, where you can fail on certain things, but the reading is slightly out of. Uh, but uh, that can be specified as well. Then we move into the food industry. Then we have the cement polyurethane products. It means these are products for the food industry. They are antibacterial. They have all the parameters like the permeability of water, impact resistance, very important, chemical resistance is important, and uh, thermal shock and heat resistance is quite important for these kind of products. We mainly have two here in Asia, which is the 900 and 600 in green. One is smooth, one is anti skin so, and that's required an HACCP certificate. Yeah, many people do not know this. The HACCP was developed actually by NASA. Yeah. 
So NASA is the uh, uh, not by Elon Musk or by NASA. So they had done this already in 1960s. So then the industry has taken over this one as well as the regulation and say the HSP certificate care is the one we want when it comes to food industry. <laughs> this material needs because they have a certain bending power. We have three to six millimeter smooth and we have six to nine millimeter anti heavy duty. So you need to anchor this material properly into the ground. Uh, you need a grid of three meter by three meter and around the parameter around the columns and the walls uh, where you produce roof lines so that the material can enter properly in. If somebody don't do this, you're facing certain problems of debonding because it's a very, very high strength uh, material. And this needs to be specified how many groove lines, how deep are the groove lines. Usually the thickness is uh, the weak and the thickness of the height is the same like the material signal. And then you uh, do this in a certain parameter. You need to be specified how many of them and how deep. We can give you, of course, as the architect consultant, in different techniques. Uh, we have different areas like uh, drainage systems, especially in the food industry, there's a lot of water, right? And the combing and scratching, um, where we apply this and where you do the groove lines properly. So we can provide you with this kind of information. And it would be the perfect for these kind of comparable areas. This is a dry section, the cleaning, of course, once in a while is water. But uh, it is more a dry application there. Uh, that is a smooth six, uh, three to six millimeter application, concrete, and then application. The HD, of course, if you can see here already the roughness, the anti stick properties. And uh, it's not as easy to apply. It is not really, it's quite difficult for the applicator to apply with a different version, of course, but not as easy like a cell level, for example. But it's the technical function. Yeah, so in high steam washing uh, areas with a lot of water, that means if you the safety, the anti scape also came back resistance. Thermoshock resistance is minus 40 plus 120 degrees. So you can imagine that when you have cold storage areas and you have warmer climate and warm areas. So it means there is, there is something going on between these two areas. And this material can uh, withstand these shocks. As well as steam washing, you have Every evening or in between, they steam washing uh, quite quite hard. For example, when you are an epoxy, yes, the molecular structure starts to vibrate around by 60 to 65 degrees. Once the molecular structure starts to move, it, it breaks off. It will uh, lift off the off the ground, and that is uh, quite a dangerous thing. So only materials which are have the capacity to do it are these kind of cement polyurethane material called CPU. So with this one, we can do steam washing, as you can see on this picture. It has a very good chemical resistance. Uh, we have additives that have nature the inside, which are uh, not supporting biological growth. The grooves I mentioned earlier, the cutting, you need the right tools and machines. That gives you a little bit more speed, because every applicator needs the same. It's often a lazy thing. I mean, John, uh, I'm making some John, I don't know, I'm making a soccer, it's fine enough, but I know all this kind of bullshit. Yeah, the thing is, you need specify the joint has to be this and this side, and somebody inside has to look maybe the main contractor or someone and say, Hey, who is your joint? And make this a little bit larger, and you cannot do it. You need, you need a sort of sound up here. So, this is specification stuff, which is important to for you to know, and then follow it because otherwise, I can't guarantee quality. So, yeah, this material is available in standard colors only. Usually, our epoxies are all available in rather, all kind of rather in plain nation. So, we have uh, a big diversity there. Carparks. <coughs> in carparks, we have, of course, here multi story carpark from the roof, water probing, raw parties you might need up to the basement. What do we have in the basement? Moisture, I can guarantee you. There's two or three levels of basement. The, the, the first and the second, you don't care too much, or you care definitely on the third one, because there is the water pool, the concrete aggregate, the drainage again, the system, the PPC you have done, uh, the, the rising deadness. Uh, is it on the sea side? Is it on a high point? Is it in a valley? We need to put this consideration of where is this building and charging that one, and then figuring out what solution we can, we can do. Um, so, on top of the, of the car, of course, we have the 
vibration, we have the movements, uh, morning, evening, and so the custom again. And under the roof, it says shop, or is it simply the next car? Could we also have a shop below? So, what kind of joint treatment I'm doing? The joint covering, the water pooling off the joints, the elongation of the material. This is technique, this is research. It means you need certain materials in a certain sequence built up. In this case, not epoxy, but not PU. We do an epoxy internal, or we use a PUs for the external most of the time because of the elongation. When I have, let's say, elongation from 400 moving to 800 or the vice versa, including having also the joint movements there from the expansion joint, if there is one. Uh, these materials need to work together. So that is research and technology that we can provide. We have the materials for these kind of different systems. So you can uh, get one of our sales guys to talk more in details for the roof. And of course, the basement. And here it comes, we had shown in the morning a session, which everybody totally underestimated completely. The architect specifies the car park and say, oh yeah, I want this car park and uh, this kind of coating and specify the material. And he said, I want some uh, roughness and I want some uh, smoothness in the car parking lots and so on. And then stop. But if you go to airports these days, or in the past of the world, you go to airports, you go especially to the areas where there's a hump, but there is a PED. Then you go to the Kesha area. And then you go to the top turn area. It's flaking off. Oh, it's oh, 90% I see it's flaking off, peeling off. Why? Because nobody has specified to reinforce at the hump. If I have a normal hump, everybody wouldn't recover. Oh, there's a hump to slow you down, right? But why not reinforce three meter before and three meter like? Why not change the sand size from glass from, from, uh, to box sit or to glass? It means we have a higher bridge. There is higher bridge, there is stop and go. There is more and more force on, on our materials. So specify only certain points, cost a little bit more, but only specify these different points. Ramp as well. We need to go up. Sure, I'm going to go to like, as a German. I know we have meter time, but this is really stark, very rough. Uh, material we need it sometimes in order to withstand the elements when it comes to roughness and ramps. But even the ramps, there is a lot of force, and that comes brings me back to the surface preparation. The ramps need also a certain roughness, not level, level is one thing, but the roughness. And then you have to see what kind of joints you doing by really proper proper holes, right? So it need also be a roughness. An anchor point, like, like I mentioned here, right? You need to select a certain reference because there is real, real force going on, right? So, and we can change Molière's box in every glass, fiberglass, and so on. So, here's the force, the turning point area is quite heavy in these, these turns. The turn areas need to be reinforced. So, the car is coming in, then we need to start. The car is coming out, we need to start the house to reinforce, including the surrounding. Go a little bit higher, one layer, change the box in or another material. So, here again, cover uh, ramps is very hard, the force is very right, very soft, unbelievable. How much feeling off I have seen that in, in my in my life. <laughs> Up turns here, it's clear, right? So, it's a to propose. And then we need to see what kind of concrete situation I have. But if we use at first a low viscose primer, maybe I can use the water based primer, something to consolidate. And then I go on with some uh, solid free epoxy part, uh, different combinations. So, yeah, outside areas, uh, car park areas, then we talk about UV stability, of course. So, uh, our material have this, this kind of stability, uh, different layouts, different levels. But trust me on that, what I just said, that we need to do more specification work on the turns, up turns, and these kind of areas. I think it's a nice, nice one. In, and shy, I don't know. So it's a beautiful car park. We can do Then we have cement based products, uh, which might interest you as well. We have the, the scratch application, cementitious um, optical look materials, and we have the self leveling products. So this is a scratch product, which is uh, consists of two scratch layers where we're grinding uh, in between each grinding procedure. 
And once this is dry, we put the sealer on top of it. We have this um, clear transparent sealer on top of it. It's most of the time a water based PU, UV stable, um, low, uh, low viscosity. And you get this kind of natural effect, which architect of like for residential hotels and so on. So different kind of designs, different kind of looks, restaurant areas, depends on how the applicator is moving. It's a little bit artistic work. And if you're using a certain grinding technique, you can achieve certain patterns. We use it for staircases. You can use it for the wall as well as for the floor. That is all depends on the traffic, on the grinding, so that achieves beautiful results using the right sealer. And then it gives you an opportunity, especially in these days where the architects love the natural uh, products uh, we use in this kind of environment. Yeah. So different colors available. Cement based heavy duty. The same cement family called Ultra Top. Before was an ultra top loss sweat going out to the ultra top. It's a minimum five millimeter cell leveling application. We use this in many areas, convention center, heavy duty mall areas. We can apply this material usually in the range for this kind of quality for around 10 millimeter, eight to 10 millimeter. This material cures in four hours under heat situation which we have in Singapore, Malaysia. Let's say six to eight hours, the car can drive over. Yeah, and we are achieving complete compressive string of 50 newton per square millimeter or 50 to 10 for, for this number. We can polish it, we can uh, cold join it with uh, different colors. There is a uh, low shrinkage, not shrink material. We use it for supermarkets, shopping malls. We use combination of wall and floor and the strength code we saw earlier. Because of the heavy duty cell level, for example, we can mix and match a little bit in this kind of area. In this case, it is a showroom. The material is pumped onto the floor either by the machine you saw earlier ones, it's a pumping machine, or we can use it by hand. We fly over it with a with a shuttle uh, that has fancy head. So it makes quite user friendly for heavy duty forklift, as well as leveling to a certain extent, maybe not super flat, with levels extremely well to category two or FM2. So according to the from the standard, if I have to adjust, I adjust only a little bit. But this material can really withstand the traffic, the compressive strain, and the leveling. Yeah, warehouse. I can mix it also by hand. Uh, we can do foam work set up like you saw earlier. We Polishing over it, and we have this beautiful result for convention center, mm -hmm. big areas, airports, uh, design areas, and so on. And it was covered. <laughs> we can add aggregates into this ultra top, uh, sanitation material, any kind, mm -hmm. glass, marble, name it. So it means if you use again, remember the, the, the grinding machine I showed, this different sequence. Again, we come into knowledge of polishing the right machines, the right speed, the right material, which is compatible to produce these kind of beautiful areas. You can use, of course, some grinding machines as well for our terrazzo, our epoxy terrazzo. We have different glass aggregates, which we have from Malaysia, from China, and so on. And the ultra toxic cementitions and the epoxy look very, very close, similar, the same, only the price is very much different. One is the same dishes, six system, one is the epoxy, six system, but budget wise, different. So you can see what kind of artistic uh, stuff you can do with it. And if you want a lower budget, but still look like in Tirazzo, so using flakes. So we are quite unique, we have a very unique flake setup where it's very convenient, very easy, uh, very fast, uh, can be executed. Um, you see, we have this place in different sizes, it goes around a little bit, uh, from one millimeter, three millimeter, five, and 20 millimeter. So you can see the different combinations, and I need nothing else than a primer on the concrete, a base color layer, that means I have, let's say blue, I use white base, roll it on, I go casting the place. The place I have really water-based acrylic place, very thin, you can see it coming around, so it's very easy to apply. 
The next day you sweep it off and you put a transfer and coating on top of it. But you provide the client something that looks like a device. It can be used in many areas from reception to office areas. Uh, as long as the CDA is a good one and we have the good CDA, uh, so it provides you with a lower budget compared to the cost of the device. <laughs> Yeah. Warranties are quite different. That's for a bookstore, for example, you can have different designs, layouts. Um, so that was for a um, project in Singapore. You see the difference between these kind of things. And it was for the Ruffles shopping mall in Singapore basement. Um, Sorry, um, you know, place uh, can you grind it up? Yeah, so uh, here's the same. You Apply the front, then it comes the base white, and you make it red. So let's say the next day I've seen this here. Then you take a spatula and you're sweeping over because the things are not, um, they're laying a little bit incorporated in the front of the different. You're stretching over it, vacuum clean it twice so it is clean. And then you apply it with a rubber squeegee, the first clear sealer. After this one, you start grinding. You can't grind onto the plates. You can only stretch a little bit over, make sure that you can even repair a little bit. For example, there's a hole up or something. If you want to take the plates in there a little bit, stuff. yeah, very simple, right? It's quite cool. You can do it. I forgot something. So, but then let it cure, and then you uh, stretch out a little bit. You can see sharp edges. Uh, clean, vacuum clean, and then a sealer. So, the rubber squeaky, very easy over it. Once it's cured, you can start really heavy grinding. And then I have an option because the question is very intelligent. The, I can use a self leveling material, makes it completely smooth over the face. Or I use one more roller coat, over the thin level, one more roller coat, and I have a side orange feel like that. Because the face is quite big, right? Even if you touch this one. You feel a little bit an orange to be there. So it's kind of a good argue as a safety effect. Right? But I have also materials which are completely smooth. Um, I had this one is for example a millimeter on a color quartz. Uh, can you talk about uh, unique joints? For that pieces, why it's a large piece? No, when you when you use the color quads and the epoxy cell and everything, I need to follow the architect's recommendation of a uh, construction point, but I do not enjoy it except in some editions. The some I mentioned earlier, you will have need the joints at a certain certain square because it must be extremely dense but uh, and very hard and you need to avoid that any kind of breaking. So we do need joints. Yes, answer your question. <laughs> and what about maintenance? Yeah, the maintenance. The maintenance is what? if it comes to the epoxy terrazzo, you mm -hmm. either maintain it with the machine with the ice key. Once every two, three years, you say, oh, there was a lot of movement. Then you get the applicator with the machine again. Do the high polishing effect onto, onto the terrazzo, that's okay. If it's uh, a coating onto a, uh, a plate system, or uh, is it? Yeah, a coat on a plate system, same thing. I would maybe rather spend a little bit of money to do one coating only, a clear transparent on top of it. I would send it again, make another coat on it, and that's basically it. I mentioned earlier, I will show it later. There is some material we have for cleaning and maintenance, a wax, and also be used as a maintenance. Um, but I prefer always to use one more coat on the screen, yes, for a very simple coat like cleaning. I come to cleaning as well. I have it in the main coat side. So, so we have all the joints, we always can take it out if you want it. So we have material to coating over joints. It was often, it was flexible enough, often the people say, oh, can I coat over the joints? Do the joints have different color than my flooring? So, but anyhow, have ever look at it, you can coat it over over the joints. So the quartz, there's nothing else, simple quartz stand, which I have here, and we can have all kind of different colors, combinations. 
Um, we can use either a vertical line or a self learning. The self learning is going just now around. You will see how nice and beautiful and smooth it is. So, and, uh, as you restable, of course, a low column will go yellow, and that's going to be completely unstable. So, we're getting this glass mirror rotation. So, then we have the PU flooring, soft flooring. So, here we can work together in combination with a, a rubber mat, which is recycled material, recycled tires. Uh, which are combined and pressed, and we have then these kind of beautiful uh, rubber mats, which we can lay under the view. We have our PU flooring, two millimeter soft um, flooring, which we use in kindergarten schools or in combination with the rubber, uh, has a certain noise reduction. In this case, we have done it for the European. For the European uh, Parliament in Strasbourg, so you walk and it's uh, very soft again. I say so because they have a lot of offices that walk around. Marvin has also a special division uh, where we have the isolation, insulation, uh, according with the decibel reduction of different floor levels as well. If you're interested, in, we can bring you up with, with these guys. So uh, very, very good and have noise reduction. So if I use our industrial flooring, it will be flooring. Uh, especially for cool old age homes. So when you fall down, it's quite quite easy. Even shopping malls like the IKEA has it. And it's quite interesting. I tell you the story. When you walk into a shopping mall and you walk over a soft surface, you stay longer in the mall. <laughs> if you stay longer in the mall, what happens? You shop more, more money. This is a highly intelligent calculation, actually. Whenever people don't think so much about it, but it's, it's true. Yeah, oh, it's nice here. Oh, it's good. No, let me just stay a little bit longer. Yeah, we can do shopping. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a clever thing. So it looks like this. So very easy. Underlayments, I can't go in details. There are a lot of underlayments where we have from one millimeter to 10 millimeter. They have different uh, compressive strengths and we can offer it to you. Depends on what you want to do. Depends on what comes on top of it, either carpet, tiles, linoleum, uh, industrial flooring. So we need to level certain areas. We have all the different level level uh, materials. Binders, sure, we bind material together. It means binding sand, marble. Um, these are clear, transparent materials which are A or UV stable or low yellowing. Uh, we can most of the time we mix in the sand outside areas, like you can see here the binder. It's for example 20 kilo of stones, one kilo of resin. We can do this kind of metal stone application about swimming pools, uh, park connector areas, pavement areas, so garage entrance areas, uh, this kind of not playground or nice, nice areas to give you the decorative touch. Uh, very easy to apply, as I just mentioned. 20 kilo of aggregates, one kilo of resin. Sometimes you have a different ratio, depends on the aggregate size. Uh, of course, you can slim this down to 15 or to 10 to 1. Um, and cleaning and maintenance. That means we have here, Rex mentioned earlier, people say, how do I clean my floor? And there are different companies I work over the years with, uh, which are um, important to have a good maintenance department. That means these guys clean regular. Knowing, for example, that they can use a sealer or wax, but it needs to be replaced maybe after one year. And this wax is quite, quite easy to apply with mock. Uh, you do some cross, cross application and then it's, it's curing very fast. And then you can use it um, after a couple of hours. Uh, or we have a simple cleaner, which we use in, uh, here's the wax again, how we apply very easy with the, with the fiber mop. Um, but the cleaner can be applied together in this right on machines. So it's quite a good one, uh, quite concentrated, and helps to remove certain parts of shoe, tire, dirt, uh, in combination with the right on machines using different kinds of uh, mats and pads. There's another knowledge. What are the different differences between the colors? Yeah, the black is very tough, very rough. And then the white one is very soft. So you need to know what kind of floor you have, what kind of material you're putting inside the detergent, not to make it yellow or color changes, or destroy the, the sheen of the of the of the floor, right? So there's also another knowledge which we can bring. And the FEPA, the FEPA guide have uh, the FEPA has some guidance. 
I was this one. Please have a look into it and download it from the website. Have I will give you these kind of reports. And that brings me to the end. That means, yeah, we didn't mention it already in Mr. Lim, and uh, that you please visit our website, go to the fair farm. Um, I give you a little bit some knowledge out of my repertoire over some years in, in two times 45 minutes. It's uh, for you, it's a thing that was good start. Please let's talk about it. That was my idea, right? So, and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and our guys are professionals and will help you with all kinds of information from technical support. And uh, yeah, download the, the app to your phone. That makes sense sometimes. Uh, we get a little bit fast access. What is that here? And I say thank you for having me. And let's have some discussion around what we can make. And thank you. Thank you, Masters. Um, actually, you like to invite at least that one to show up to that right? Yeah. 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 Hey, everyone. Uh, I will show a few of our more remarkable projects in the northern region, uh, mainly factories which are involved in uh, some circuit preparation uh, procedure, which more critical. So I'll just share a few with you. <laughs> Um, okay, for um, uh, we have uh, our product, we can involve uh, all this uh, industry, factory industry, semicon, medical industry, which are mainly for being known. So, all those quick preparation for this how industrial economy percent very, very major. So, um, we uh, very emphasize on skill preparation to our navigator. So, uh, all these are periods of our uh, two projects uh, for the past uh, several years. One of the region and uh, uh, uh and just to show you for me, uh, BAD, uh, is our first uh, project uh, in uh, in uh, year uh, 2013. Then after that, we done the yeah, BAD tools in 2017. Um, then uh, uh, recently we just done did the yeah, third one, uh, even bigger. Recently, just completed then uh, some of the uh, semicon projects are more strength. Um, we also did um, fish and coal, Boston Scientific, Smith and Nephew, um, APO. Okay. So, uh, besides uh, semicon projects, uh, chemicals, pharmaceutical, food factory is uh, also uh, very important on the service profession, especially for steel range. Because just now, uh, Marcus did, did mention uh, the curing of uh, steel material is a very fast, fast setting so that uh, the material has to close. So, the service profession is maybe Besides, we, we have to get a SFB uh, 4 to 5 or 4 to 6. Then on the perimeters, all the perm perimeter areas also uh, need to cut the growth line so that the material can tuck in. Then it will curl up on the one day. Okay. Then uh, for mechanical industry, like the Brown, we, we did it in the year 2014, uh, a very big breakthrough for us because it's quite big area. And uh, the AD projects, uh, the project is very challenging because of uh, the, the, the student owner, he want the finishing looks like uh, final. Look like yeah, others area one, so they want to match it together, same feel, uh, light color, but they want it to have a uh, uh, black colors spot like uh, their vinyl. So we custom made the products for them so that it is looks to matching the whole factory. Um, and then also <coughs> you have a properly fabric can move the uh, move uh, on top. Then uh, CPU uh, projects, uh, a common speaker project for the SN factory in uh, uh, northern China. So we, um, this is uh, one of our key customers. Um, we, we did their project 10 years ago from time to time, every of the extension. Because of, uh, actually we have a very good printer, very committed, then um, we done very successful projects over there. So that 
all the extension we are using our uh, uh, same products, uh, uh, same applicators, <laughs> is partly because of a very good survey connection so that the material can perform well. Uh, this is uh, one of our um, first very first project breakthrough that I was able to for Penang region. It is a cultured diamond uh, factory. The owner required uh, um, an exit from the bees because uh, uh, they have a lot of oil uh, on their environment. Then they want it and we say because of American, they went particular on safety. So that uh, we custom design uh, with our NDC properties. Then, of course, also uh, we have a water barrier properties for the block. <coughs> Rebound, this one also very special case. Uh, the owner they want to have uh, something fresh and recent so that we custom made the, the design. You can see the, the grass with uh, white, black, and green. So the, the, the different tone, the different color can camouflage the scratches. So uh, for the requirement, then we did. Uh, a mocha, then a client come to testing, pass it over together with a few uh, competitors of our product together that the that, uh, 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 we ground they choose uh, our product to be applied outside. So this one also one of our breakthrough uh, project on 40,000 meters square. Okay, uh, this one is a uh, uh, previous bag. Uh, it's a very challenging, although it's a small area, but because of uh, it's an old factory, then they uh, we need we need to remove the existing uh subject. So and after you remove, you need to level it back. So use what material to level back. Then uh consultant consultant also uh, uh mentioned that the the owner they want their floor to be flat as R. One is R2. So we need to design a system that uh, which can cater for traffic and, and also at the same time you need to level it. You, have, you need to have that level then um so that we we, we put in uh, we put in uh, this uh, uh you can see uh Mapri for in a and it is a custom to level back the, the, the removal after we remove the vinyl, the towel, so we need to cut up. 50 mm, some 25 mm, so they need to call up back, then after that, make it make sure it has the level that uh, uh, consultant request, then after that, only finish. Then we also uh, custom design the system to be uh, maintenance. So the finishing is the technical finish. We purposely uh, put another layer of a UV coat so that it burns the color. This is only a certain uh, They like to have a gray color tone, but a uh, gray color tone is of a uh, new material tends to turn slight uh, brownish so that it looks not so nice because the Hancock factory they have a lot of uh, overseas service labor so that uh, they're very particular on the image. Then, uh, so that we purposely design another new top so that we can maintain uh, <laughs> aesthetic for longer time, at least five, six years, then only you can you report it. Um, this one, one of the projects is uh, quite challenging. Um, it, it is uh, it's my I think my 15 years back, a uh, Kayan, old Kayan from my past company. Then uh, the the owner, uh, the owner because of uh, budget wise, so that they they use a um, local applicator, a local manufacturer. Uh, they they start to did some of their refurbishment projects. So, but because of the applicator not so experienced. Then um, we didn't do a proper circuit preparation and also didn't use the correct material so that the the whole the whole factory floor uh, like bonding a lot of issues. So that after that we call us go in to see how to solve it. So actually yeah, circuit preparation very, very important. So you need to know uh, um, besides circuit preparation, the applicator need to know how to do it, then uh, uh, propose the correct material. So uh, uh, although it's a small project, but to the owner, 
um, actually they waste a lot of money, unnecessary money to, to, to do a long ploy, then they have to remove it and we do. Yeah, this one gave me three uh, uh, years. So, um, okay, we can see there's another uh, 2002 meter square of workout 1000. Total 1000 is body area system. Uh, it's a pinching and also it's a work activity system. So, uh, certain depression for body area also very important because body area is a quite flat material. So uh, when the, the material comes with fast that means that it will pull, the, pull your subject. So the circuit preparation with like minimum CSP 4 to 6 is very, very important. So the applicator need to know what machine to use, the correct machine to use, scarifying, shock plastic machine to use, then only you will create that profile for the, the correct material to fall on it. Then it can last, last you more than that is. Eight then is all above. Uh, last and not least, uh, Intel. Uh, Intel is uh, to us uh, to to uh, uh flooring people. Intel is one of the ceiling type of client. Uh, it's not it's not that the material that they request is very special. I think. When we, when we read about their spec, their, their, their books, guidelines, of oh, actually the bacteria, everyone also have, all the manufacturers also have. But how to propose, how to um, how to give your solution to them. So uh, for this side is a, a consideration. To us, all the detail side is very difficult, very difficult to do because uh, they have a very strict consultant. Um, and the owner, the whole team of the owner also very knowledgeable. They they, they know what they want. But then and also they very follow. They say, oh, I have a N brand store from US brand, you need to use this. But uh, to us, uh, we have a new brand to them. So how to how to break through it? So uh, because of this old side. For you to know the editing uh track. So you can see they already removed. They already removed certain area is up to 20 mm. Then uh also a lot of area is sunken, then they need to cast a new concrete, then only can do finish up. So um for this project, uh we, we need to propose the crack material to level back the block with their budget. So cost is very important. With the budget, then after that, um, we also need to propose uh, material based on their specification, their requirement, their premium requirement, and also one more thing is uh, yeah, the fitness and the required. They are asking for FF25 therapy. Then it's not a very high spec to to us to our educator. This is quite standard spec, but when it come to site, um, the owner. And the consultant said, after you're done, because your patient is brought, uh, I'm not satisfied. Although we use straight catch, uh, uh, um, straight catch uh, meter to, to measure, we pass the FF on the design of the But to them, when they see or got the little bit and the okay, that's my cause of the level, the level need to level back at this stuff. When we some the big and F. When you come to 30 and then we use the box model, that box that box model material. This one, uh, this one, the stem with a racing material, then you, then you need to cover it. The moment you cover it with a very thick thickness, the whole floor was coming down. So the level will be very big. So how to do it that you need to do a lot of driving, tapping, tapping the high spot, catch back the low spot, with a high strength fat set, uh, uh, epoxy scratch on the period. So we have to do many rounds of uh, uh, cutting and uh, scratch work back the level that only finishing. So it's very challenging now because of uh, um, not only pass the pass the the written written requirement, but also the satisfactory on the setting. So to us. We, we, we feel like uh, 
because of uh, we have a very good educated team. So uh, very committed. So uh, this one also one of the biggest project for us, for our company, uh, 15,000 meters square. Um, maybe, maybe to y'all, uh, it's not a big project. Because yeah, very big project is very challenging. Uh, we take three months, more than three months for submission only. Then for mock-up, one month. You know, we do, and we also do a lot of support, and especially like on um, the of hands. So uh, for mock-up, for of hands, then uh, every uh, every item, every 1,000 meter square, also uh, 1,000 meter square, need a uh, one of hands. So this is what we uh, you can give additional support uh, if necessary. Because uh, for them, they need to have some record of books. So if next time, really, because it's a revolution job. The subject already got too long already. Then uh, they already do a building process. Then the building process maybe will weaken the subject. So they also worry next time they got problem. So that they put in some records in that field record. So if next time got any issue, at least they have some record on a uh, book. Uh, so for them, in trade fact. But to me, um, for a new project, new concrete comfort small is good enough mm -hmm. for our applicators to go into those certification. Uh, it's not nothing certifying for granting school. But of course, uh, certifying you need to control on the concrete the grade, mm -hmm. uh, minimum grade that we find, and uh, the GD conductor also very important. We need to control on their concrete quality. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs>